From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs, Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now on the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Jungle Smoke. There was no more than the usual commotion in the jungle as Tarzan rode easily in the back of Tantor the elephant. But a thousand miles from this tranquil scene, a man worked swiftly, cautiously, not realizing that his actions would soon bring him face to face with the Lord of the Jungle. The man was Harry Douglas, whose clever hands were busy packing a parachute. He smiled to himself as he folded the white silk because he knew this parachute would never open. The smile vanished as the door to the hangar where he worked slid back. Harry, what are you doing in the hangar at this hour of night? Oh, oh, Eli. Well, go on back to bed. I, I'm just getting ready for tomorrow. Well, you might have told me instead of letting me worry where you were. I thought maybe the police had The police on. don't know anything. By the time they do, nobody's going to know where we are. I hope you're right. I hope it won't be necessary to actually use these parachutes. Don't you worry, Eli. This is my part of the show. You got hold of the diamonds. It's my job to get them out of Africa. And the sooner the better. I'm getting nervous, Harry. <laughs> Just relax. I know what I'm doing. I hope so. Well, if we're going to take off in the morning, you better get some sleep. I will. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> Just worry about yourself, Eli. Some 5,000 feet above him in the hot African sky, Tarzan saw the small twin-engine Gemini winging northward. His primitive instincts resented this intrusion of civilization even so far above his beloved jungle. And what would have been his thoughts had he been able to look into the cockpit and see what was happening? The hand of Harry Douglas slipped stealthily to the throttle deliberately eased it back. The engine slowed and faltered. Harry, what's the matter? The engines, what's happening? I, I don't know. They're, they're conking out. We'll have to jump. Jump? Harry, I can't. The diamonds, we'll lose the diamonds. That's better than losing your life. The strong box is in the valise. There's no time to get it out now. Jump, Eli. I'll try to hold her on course until you're clear. Open the door. Jump. Harry, I'm scared. I, I can't. You've got to. Jump, Eli. Jump. <laughs> so long, pal. Now then, I'll just pull out of this dive. I'll give her a little throttle and... And, and what's, what's the matter it's jammed. The throttle's jammed. Turn over. You have to turn over. It's no use. I gotta jump. This parachute better open. As he sat on the back of Tatter the Elephant, Tarzan watched the tiny speck of a body fall from the plane, held his breath, waiting for the parachute to open, but it never did. The tiny speck became larger, then was swallowed silently in some distant part of the jungle. He saw, too, the plane diving out of control, and the second figure jumped clear. But this time, the white silk billowed out, and Tarzan raced toward the spot where the man had floated to earth. He found Harry Douglas swinging from his shroud lines, which were caught in a tree. Stay back. I have a gun. I kill. You understand? I kill. I understand, Tarmangani. You, you speak English? I speak many tongues, including those of my brothers, Mangani, the ape, and Tantor, the elephant. Well, then cut me down. But don't forget this gun. I don't trust a savage, no matter how he talks. Oh, Tantor, do you hear? He has a gun. 
He threatens Tarzan with a gun. Tarzan? Yes. And when I come as a friend, I do not like to be threatened. But if I don't cut you down, Cheetah the Panther will. Oh, I was wondering how long I'd have to hang there. You should know better than to fly your craft over this part of Africa. I, well, my, my compass went out. I, I was lost. Oh, say, talk about heat. That's the hottest breeze I ever felt. And for good reason, if your civilized nostrils could only tell you. Huh? What do you mean? What's happening? The crash of your plane set the jungle on fire. The animals are stampeding. Oh, quickly, let Tantor swing you to his back before we're crushed. Uh, no, he'll kill me. Why, well, that elephant could... Tantor! No, 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 don't. Don't let him touch me. No, no, no. He'll not hurt you. Hang on while I swing up behind you. No. Run, Tantor, run. Look, back there. The flames. I can see them. You brought this destruction to the jungle? If it overtakes us, there'll be justice in your punishment. How much of a chance do we have? That's up to the wind. Faster, Tanto! Faster! Faster! There was one hope to reach the banks of the Ubangi River. Although Tarzan instinctively distrusted Harry Douglas, he could not desert him. From out of the previously silent, almost motionless wilderness, now poured every sort of beast and bird. The leopard and the lion, the hyena and the jackal, hereditary enemies fleeing side by side. Behind them, the wall of flame leaped forward. Tarzan! The river! I can see it! You're a lucky man, Tarmangani. You'll live now to see another day. Uh, 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 oh, that's one ride I'll never forget. Oh, how long will it be until the fire dies out? You do. The sun is already hidden by black clouds. There'll be rain in a short while. Yeah, that's good. That's fine. We'll camp on the other side of the river. In the morning, I'll take you to Garara, the English settlement. Uh, I'm not going to Garara, and neither are you. If you want my help, you'll go where I say. Hey, listen, Tarzan. I've got to find where my plane crashed. Why? There's nothing left of it. Not quite nothing. There's some things that don't burn. Oh? What sort of thing is that? That's my secret, Tarzan. But I'm going back to the plane. <laughs> you wouldn't last one day in the jungle. Oh, no? You seem to do all right. I was raised by the apes. This is my home, just as the great city is yours. You're taking me back, Tarzan. Maybe a slug from this 45 wouldn't be much good against a lion, but against you? Well, you're only human. I'm not afraid of your gun, but I am curious to know what reason prompts your foolhardy desire. And never mind the reason. Just do what I say. All right. Tarzan will take you back. But you'll wish you'd gone to Garada instead. Oh. Whatever's left of the plane should be someplace nearby. Yes. It better be. I can't go much farther. I don't think I'm too tired to pull this trigger. Oh, I never underestimate an opponent. Look. There it is. Huh? There's the pile of twisted metal you think so important. Yeah, that's it, all right. Come on. Huh. Yeah, here. Here's the steel handle from the valise. That means the strong box is around here somewhere. <laughs> In the excitement of your greed just now, you turned your back on me. I could have killed you. Yeah, you could have. Well, now that we're here and I know the way back, I don't need you anymore. Oh? You think you've learned the ways of the jungle so soon? I just think maybe you, uh, 
shouldn't live to know why I came back here. Without me, you'll never get back alive. <laughs> it's burnt over all the way. The only animals we came across were dead. There are other things to fear besides the animals. Look across the ground behind you. Huh? Uh, natives! Must be a hundred of them. Put your gun away. They don't look very friendly to me. Do what I say. We'll go to meet them. You got okay, but no funny business. Get rid of them. I don't want them hanging around. Come on. And keep your gun from sight. Gomangani! Tarzan approaches you in peace. We, too, come in peace. Advance. Tarzan does not know the mark of your tribe. We are Wamabu, and Okate is our chief. He has sent for you and your companion. Tarzan has other matters to attend to, but I send your chief my greetings. You come with us. Tarzan has spoken. He has sent his greetings. What are they gibbering about? I can't make it out. But I've heard of the Wamabos, and what I heard I don't like. Why do they look at us that way? Let's get out of here. Let's make a run for it. No, no, it's too late. They have spears, and the fire has destroyed the protection of the jungle. Eagle! Eagle! Double crossing! Two natives went down with bullets through their hearts. More fell to the flashing steel blade of Tarzan's knife, but the odds were too great against them. Eventually, Tarzan and his crazed companion were borne to the ground and bound securely with leather thongs. Then they were marched many miles to the Wamabo village, which had escaped the fire. In the center of the village, Tarzan saw something which gave him his first indication of what was in store. Tarzan, what are they going to do to us? Look over there, lying on the ground. It's just a dead goat. What does that mean? The goat is dead, yes, but from the marks and wounds, I know the animal was tortured to death. You mean they get some kind of kicks from doing things like that? They only use animals as substitutes when they have been unable to capture any humans. What? You mean that the... Oh, no, they wouldn't, not to us. We may still get a chance to fight again. Oh, that must be the chief over there. Talk to him, Tarzan, tell him. Yes, tell him I know where to get him a million dollars worth of diamonds. If he'll let us go. Oh, so that's what you went back to the plane for, huh? Yeah, but he can have them. I just want to... Oh. Tarzan. What? Look beside him. The strong box. He's already got the diamonds. <laughs> Keep us tied up on this dirty shack. Why don't they get it over with? You know as much as I do. Oh, Kata, their chief only said we'd know our fate at sundown. Oh, the diamonds. All the careful planning. How to get them. How to fly them out of Africa without getting caught. And how to kill Eli so I'd have them all for myself. I had it worked out perfect. <laughs> no crime is ever perfect. Oh, Kata, come. Talk with you. We'll soon know where your crime has led us both. I come to tell you your fate. Speak, Okata. But remember you speak to Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. No longer, Lord of Jungle. Tarzan and friend must die at ceremonial dance. Why, Chief of the Wamabo? Why must we die? Iron bird that fall from sky set jungle on fire. My people's cattle destroyed. But what good's it gonna do to kill us? You be sacrificed at feet of idol. Then maybe cattle come to life again. The idol cannot bring back your cattle. We see everything ready. You will be tied to stake, and soon dance of death will begin. <laughs> Can't do it! 
it. Not like this. Not in cold blood. Is it any different from the way you killed your friend? I have no sympathy for you. But I would rather die under the fangs of Numa the lion than at the hands of the Gomangani. Uh, what can we do? you you got to think of something, Tarzan. Tarzan has been thinking. Kata! Why, Tarzan call? You ask if Okata is sure that his idol will restore the cattle. Idol often angry, not do as we wish, even after sacrifice. Tarzan can do what your idol cannot. If Okata gives Tarzan the shiny stones from the iron box, the Wamabo will have two head of cattle for every one they lost. How Tarzan do this? Okata knows the word of Tarzan will not be broken. I will do what I say before the next full moon. Will Tarzan pledge not bring back with him Banda Bascari or any other men? Tarzan will pledge what Okata asks. Uh, sure. Yes, Chief. Let us go and you get your cattle back. You stay here. Hostage. Unless Tarzan return by next full moon with two head cattle for every shiny stone I give. You die the death of many fires for idol of Gomangi. Go now, Tarzan. No! No! Take me with you, Tarzan! Don't leave me with these savages! Tarzan! 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 Before the night was out, Tarzan was in the jungle, free again, but not free of his promise. It was late the next day that he heard what he hoped for. It was a tribe of apes. Tarzan dropped from the trees and faced their leader. The bull ape lunged at this strange intruder, but Tarzan moved faster than the of lightning, grabbing the wrist of the long ape arm, sending the animal crashing to the ground. Having established his supremacy, Tarzan gave the apes his instructions. Then he vanished into the jungle toward Garara and the diamond merchant there. Tarzan, what are you doing in town? Hello, Bill. I came to get money to buy livestock at the auction. Well, if it's not too much, I'll be glad I to... I need a great deal. But I've got diamonds to sell in exchange. Here you are. Let me see those. Pick one that's worth about a thousand pounds and then keep the rest in your safe until they can be returned. Tarzan, I don't know where you got these, but I'm unable to help you. Why? What's the matter? I can't give you a thousand pounds for one of these. In fact, I couldn't give you fifty pounds for the whole box full. They're all fakes. <laughs> I don't know, Tarzan. It's a strange story. But where could the real diamonds be? I'm sure that Harry Douglas thought these stones were genuine. Why not just forget the whole thing? man like that's not worth rescuing. Let the Wamabos do what they want. With I him. told him I'd return, and I also gave my promise to Okata. Well, I wish there was something I could do, but a thousand pounds... I know. Some... Thanks anyway, Bill. It's crazy. You said you promised not to bring back any other people. Even if you had the cattle, do you mean you could drive them through the jungle single-handed? Mm, something like that. What are you going to do now? Go back to the jungle. I've got to think about this. And I don't think well in the city. Just don't go back to the Wamabo, Tarzan. I have to, with or without the cattle. But Tokata will answer to my knife if he tries to bind me to that stake again. You've got until the next full moon. If you'd like, I'll spend a few days with you. I'd like to get away from the city myself. Well, come along. The peace of the jungle will give us our answer. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been in the jungle. More beautiful than I remembered. Soon we'll come to the place of the fire. You will not find that beautiful. 
Well, I suppose not. Too bad it had to happen. It was near here that I first saw the plane. I wish I... Hmm? Look. Scar, the vulture. I wonder what he's found this time. Bill, come on. It's a thin chance, but... Maybe we seek without knowing it what Scar has found. What do you mean, Tarzan? It's probably just a dead deer that the hyenas aren't through with yet. Probably it is. O over there. Huh? There's something. Oh, it's a man. At least it was. And there's the parachute that never opened. This is the man Harry Douglas murdered. What are you doing? Why are you ripping his coat apart? Perhaps Harry wasn't the only one with plans for a double cross. Perhaps... Yes. Look here. From the lining of his coat. Diamonds. Let me see one. These are the real ones. They have to be. Yes, these are genuine. Oh, what beauties. <laughs> Two men so smart, they out-tricked themselves. We'd better get these stones back to Garara. I know. There isn't much time before the full moon. A few days later began one of the strangest cattle drives in history. Through the jungle, great bull apes rode herd on the frightened cattle, driving them along, defending them from the jungle perils. Finally, the wild apes, the docile cattle, and the lord of the jungle neared the Womabo village. Okata's people came out to meet them, and the apes melted unnoticed into the jungle beyond the village. A short while later, Tarzan stood with Okata and Harry Douglas inside the village palisade. He did what he said, Okata. Now, how about untying my hands and letting me loose? Yes, Okata, release him. No. My people have cattle again. Now we offer sacrifice to idol. Show our thanks. The idol didn't bring the cattle. Tarzan did. All things come from idol. Tonight you both die. Tarzan kept his word, but the Wamabo chief did not. Now Tarzan will punish Okata. <laughs> What's that for? Noise of Tarzan, not scare Okata. You are surrounded by warriors. And your village is surrounded by mine. Look, Okata, coming over your walls. Huh. Apes, apes, hundreds of them. Tarzan, uh, die for this. Uh, look out, Tarzan. Okata's behind you. I see him. seen anything like it. The way those apes fought. We owe them our lives. What happens now, Tarzan? What are you going to do with me? I will take you to the police at Garara. Or you can remain in the jungle alone. Yeah, I figured it'd be something like that. Well, the jungle's better than prison. You've made your choice. So now I leave you. Uh. And he's gone. Disappeared in the trees. No. No, I can't do it. I, I can't stay here alone. I... Tarzan! Tarzan! Tarzan, come back! Have you changed your mind? Yes, yes! Uh, I've changed my mind. I, I don't care what happens. Just don't leave me here again. For once, you show signs of wisdom. The jungle takes care of its own, but unlike the civilized world, it punishes traitors and criminals in slow and unmerciful methods. Come, we'll go to Garana. Now, strange that only the young and the strong disappear from the tribal village, and then the answer seems to loom on the horizon, seaward, 
a black hulled brigantine with a hold large enough to convey slaves. Tarzan, despite the objections of an hysterical skipper, becomes a passenger aboard ship that is caught in an all consuming fire at sea in evidence destroyed. Tarzan, a transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by David Chandler, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>